Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this is going to be my Teen Wolf episode 11 video. Since the finale is next week, after we get through all the craziness of this week, I'll explain what's going on with season 5. Right now there are a number of ways the finale can still go down, so I'll add my favorite theories after my review. Careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, but here are my top 5 WTF moments. I'll wait just a sec. Okay, here we go. Number 5, Deaton is back. Seth Gilliam has been filming Walking Dead season 5. That's why he hasn't been in very many episodes this season. People die way more frequently on that show, so the odds that he'd totally bail on Teen Wolf, like he'd leave the show, are pretty slim. Like, I think he'll definitely be back in season 5. Daniel Sharman's a good example of that. When he left the show, he asked specifically not to be killed off so that he could always come back if he wanted to. But I totally love the Silence of the Lambs thing going on between Dr. Valak and Deaton. I'm gonna go ahead and guess he was not a medical doctor, though. So if you didn't get the trepanation reference, Trepanning was basically the old process of drilling a hole in someone's head to release pressure. They would do that to expose, you know, some of the outer brain matter just as a way to fix medical problems. There's actually evidence that they practiced it all the way back in the Neolithic era. That was around like 10,000 BC, way long time ago. That was the time that ancient humans started to develop more sophisticated tools, apparently so that they could drill holes in each other's heads. But Teen Wolf history lessons for the win. I guess the reason that Volok did it was just to expose that third eye whenever he manifested psionic powers. And if you didn't notice, the place where Deaton went in the dream state was that same underground temple in Mexico where Kate was hiding out, or where she's been hiding out, and where they found Derek in the season premiere. Teen Wolf is all about the circle of life, so they started in Mexico, they have to travel around and come back to Mexico at the end. They haven't fully explained Kate's magic yet, so I'm hoping the finale, which is actually titled The Broken Spell, clears some of that up. Like, hopefully Deaton will explain the mechanics of what Kate has done. The other big reveal, though, is the promise that Deaton made to someone he loved. I'm assuming that's Derek's mother. Hopefully season 5 is going to explain that. That's like a whole episode you could spend on that. But on to number 4, Derek does not care about the money. Mostly because it was never his. It's all Peter's, like Styles thought, which is kind of funny. Derek's money, for all intents and purposes, has always been safe. He owns the loft, and the rest is just in a series of bank accounts. I think that's the show just telling us that his money is safe, like there's no danger to Derek's money. It sounded like Derek was suggesting that Scott keep the money. I mean, he was saying that he didn't want Peter to get it back, or didn't think it was a good idea, but I think he was implying that Scott should just take it back home. But don't you wonder about Styles and that Eichenhaus debt now? Like, maybe it wasn't forgiven, maybe Scott paid it off, and manufactured the letter to Styles' dad, unless Styles was faking and he wrote the letter to his dad. Either way, I don't think that Peter's gonna get his money back, regardless of how that debt got paid off. There was also a moment when Derek was explaining that he owned the building that I thought the show was trying to tease Scott moving into the loft just to fix his money problems. Like, we don't need to fix our roof because we live in Derek's building, rent free now. I don't think that's actually gonna happen. I think Scott and Kira having the date in the loft was about as far as that'll go. But, on to number 3, Liam is still totally flipping out. It's pretty clear they're preparing him for a big turnaround in the finale. The full moon is a problem because he still can't control his shifts and it's only 24 hours away. That's basically the show telling us that the finale will be a full moon, so everyone's gonna be totally crazy, but they'll be super powered. I am totally gonna be happy to see Liam get out of that headspace, see him stop hallucinating stuff. That's been going on all season, it's one of the few running stories that I haven't enjoyed as much. But I do understand that he's like the new guy, so he has to have a struggle to overcome across the season. He's the freshman, so he gets the scared puppy problems. In the finale, presumably, he'll overcome those, earn his wolf stripes, and just become a fully-fledged member of the pack. Usually, surviving traumatic events is what brings people together. Which, of course, Kate and Peter are more than happy to supply. There was this whole thing going across the entire episode, reminding us about the relationship between fear, anger, and strength. And I think that's going to come back in the finale. Liam going all bro dude in the weight room was just a good reminder that the more angry he is, the stronger he gets. Like a sliding scale of hulkness. I'm just betting in the finale, he'll find that motivation to stay pissed off enough to destroy the berserkers. Scott's always going to be the most powerful one just because of his alpha abilities, but Liam has been teased as being like crazy more powerful than any of the other wolves. I was really happy to see Brett help him out during the lacrosse game. There's also a chance that Brett could help out in the finale too, especially if Satomi gets involved. We don't really know who they're taking down to Mexico, but presumably everyone is going. But on to number two, things getting a little bit more serious now. Peter wants Malia to kill Kate. This actually got me really excited at the thought that she would go through with it. Not because she wants to help Peter, but because she'll have to save Scott. 
They've already established how protective of Scott she is, and she's not fully integrated into human society. Like, she's still got a lot of animal in her personality. So character-wise, she's still in kind of a limbo state, so she could be in that mind space where she considers killing Kate to be a totally justifiable act. She could even feel happy about it, like she's saving them. Really, the only thing that made it sound kind of sinister was Peter giving off his creepo vibe. And who else loved his reaction to the desert wolf? I am positive she's your mother. I cannot wait to learn about that history. I'm not totally sure we'll meet her in the finale, but hopefully by season 5 she'll be a character on the show. What I'm really hoping to see is Melia go through with killing Kate in the finale, and it just racks her with guilt for all of season 5, and it takes her mother to help her get over it. Like the remorse for killing Kate will be more than Styles can help her with, it'll be something she needs her mother for. I can already imagine their awkward family dinners, Peter, the Desert Wolf, and Malia. I wonder if something like that came up, Derek would just pretend to have a date with Brayden and just go off and hide somewhere. But my number one WTF moment, Kate is going to turn Scott into a berserker. Or maybe I should say turn him into something that looks like a berserker. It's still so unclear what's involved with that. I'm guessing Deaton is going to explain that part. He's going to deaton splain berserkers. And we have to remember what Derek looked like when he kind of went into semi-alpha form in episode 10. Like I think that we'll see that full on in the finale. Hopefully we'll get to see him hook out Peter Alpha style and just smash the hell out of the temple. Presumably Deaton knows what's happened to Derek too, so I'm guessing that saving Scott, fixing Derek, and Liam fixing himself will all tie in with Malia killing Kate. I don't think it's going to be that simple, like killing Kate isn't just going to fix everything, but I do think that the Berserkers have something to do with Derek's mojo. Like I'm wondering if Kate is using his mojo to power the transformations. Scott's arc this season has been all about him dancing around the idea of becoming a monster. Him hallucinating killing Liam in his dream state actually makes a lot more sense now. That might have been a premonition for whatever he'll be like under Kate's influence. The interesting thing about the way they ended the episode though, and what they were teasing for the finale, is, is that if Peter's going to try and steal Scott's powers, I think the circumstances of Scott's death are really important for how that works. I mean, if Scott's friends end up killing him like Kate wants, I think that would totally botch Peter's plan. I think Peter has to be the one to kill Scott to take his power, which might be why Peter is enlisting Malia's help, just as a backup. Anyway, let me know what your biggest WTF moment from the episode was, is, and do you think that Kate is actually going to turn Scott, or is he going to like hook out at the last moment and it's like a total fake out, like he won't actually become a berserker, he'll just go into crazy alpha form. So here are actually a couple of my bigger predictions. First, I don't think that Peter is going to take Scott's power, but he will steal someone's power. Malia might not end up killing Kate, but she will do something to completely mentally scar herself that will last through season 5. And Scott is going to go into full alpha form. He'll look like a version of whatever Peter looked like. Super huge, but not quite the same. And we will see Parrish finally manifest his powers. I know I didn't mention it during my top 5 moments, but we did see Parrish's eyes flash red, so I think we'll figure out whatever he actually is, and I'm guessing it's fire related. The title of the finale, like I said, is Broken Spell, so it implies that they'll break the spell Kate put on Derek. So whatever is happening, he'll be fixed by season 5. So overall I gave the episode a solid B+. I thought it was a good setup for the finale and the way they tease things and character arcs that'll go into season 5. I did like the really trashy romance novel motif they went for too, although that only kind of went up to about halfway through the episode. Speaking of which, I tried to read the titles of all those books that Dr. Valak had. I only saw The Afternoon Wife, Love's Passion, and Hawaiian Honeymoon. Maybe there's a teaser in there for season 5. Like between the finale and season 5, some of the characters will go on vacation to Hawaii but the afternoon wife could totally be a reference to Malia's mother, but I guess you could also see them as visual references to all the trashy romance novel moments in the episode, like when it jumped from couple to couple. Like, you know, we had Derek and Brayden, then we had Styles and Malia, and then Scott and Kira. The books could just be representative of them. I totally could see Brayden taking Derek to Hawaii during the off season though. That would be a lot of fun. So you guys can let me know if you agree, but I feel like season four has done a good job of setting each of these characters up so that they have a place to go in future seasons, like not just season five, like, but they'll have places to develop themselves into season seven. I don't see the show going past seven seasons, but if they can gain the type of audience that Supernatural has, they could go on forever, especially if they can keep bringing new characters like Liam in. Don't you just feel like Dylan Sprayberry could totally be like the new Scott if Tyler Posey wanted to leave the show and like they had Scott leave town for a while or something? That's actually a good thought to end on. How many seasons do you think the Teen Wolf will get? I expect we'll at least see six. They wouldn't have upped the order from 12 to 20 between seasons 4 and 5 if MTV did not feel confident about the show. 
But since I'm pretty much moved into my new apartment, even though I don't quite have my set fixed yet, that's why it looks like I'm making videos in limbo, I will be posting my Team Wolf finale video on time, so that'll be Monday night. Be sure to subscribe to get it if you're just finding me for the first time. Right now though, you can click here to get last week's episode video, and you can click here to start getting ready for Arrow and The Flash. Some shit is gonna be going down. Those shows are actually starting in October. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.